So just to show you what we're going to be doing here, um, for the seams, you have two sort of separate areas that you want to sew. The first is you want to sew along the top of the head and also along the side. But then you're going to skip this part because that's the opening for your basket and you're going to need to sew the sides and also the base. So you can go ahead and fold your chick in half and then you can pick whichever to start from. Um, I'm going to choose the top and you can take your darning needle and thread it. Now it really doesn't matter what stitch you use for this. I'm just going to use the whip stitch because I'm familiar with it, um, but I will try and show you some different alternatives if you prefer those. So for the whip stitch, I'm starting on the back here. I'm just going to bring my needle around and try and find the corner to match it up. And I'm going to go in and through that corner that I was just in to sort of secure my yarn before I start um, stitching. So essentially you're just going from back to front to back again. Um, try and line it up as much as possible. Mine's already a little off center, um, but for this kind of a project, it doesn't really matter. I'm going through the top bars of the stitches for the most part. Um, you just want to make sure you're not too far down. Otherwise, you'll be um, getting some of your knitting in there as well, and you'll be changing the height of your basket and the shape of it slightly. So again, just going from back, coming around, into that front stitch, and into the back one. That's all the whip stitch is. If you prefer a different stitch, you can also just go from this back stitch, then into the second back stitch, and out the front, pull through, and then go back into that front stitch and into the back one. Um, whichever method of seaming seems to be the easiest for you, that's completely fine. So now that I've reached the end of the head, I'm just going to take my yarn and I'm going to poke it right through to get to the other side of the chick. I'm not concerned about this long strand of yarn running along the inside because nobody's going to see the inside. So it really doesn't matter. And now you can continue seaming down this part. And you can use a similar process with this tail. Um, I would seam up along this edge and then hop down here and seam the base. Once you've finished your seam, you're going to want to fasten your yarn on before you cut it. So to do this, I've just um, flipped my basket inside out and pulled my yarn through to the inside. Um, and now you have a couple choices for how you want to do this. If you'd like to just tie a knot, um, that's completely fine. So pull your yarn into a stitch just to secure it initially, and then you could go into the stitch beside it, and this will form a loop. And then you'll just put your needle through it making a knot with that yarn. Um, and then if you wanted to make a couple more and cut your yarn, that's completely fine. If you'd like it to be um, less visible and affect the finished product less, you can also just weave it to the inside um, by following the curves of the stitches. So for this, if it helps you to remember, you can use smiles and frowns. Um, this up curved one is a smile and I'm going to follow that curve and go into the frown beside it. And then up here, here's another smile. I'm going to go into that one. Now I'm going to follow the curve of this frown going into the smile beside it. And then I'm going to come back to this stitch that I've already gone through and go through it again. So you're weaving in a bit of a zigzag pattern, um, going through each stitch twice. So here I would follow the curve of this smile, go into the frown, and then angle up to the left to go into that smile that I just came through. Um, either way is completely fine. But once you're ready, you can just go ahead and cut your yarn.
To embroider the eyes onto your chick, I would just tie um, an initial knot in a length of yarn and then thread it through your needle. And make sure you're still working on the inside of your basket while you do this. Um, and I'm just going to pick a stitch in approximately the location I want the eye to be and go through that until the knot catches. And then I'm going to um, go through it again to form my loop and then come behind and through the loop to secure my yarn. Now you can flip your basket to the right side again. and come through your knitting with that yarn. Um, and now you can pretty much do whatever you would like. Um, I would try and embroider roughly a circle, um, catching these parts, the flat parts of the stitches. Um, try and avoid the bumps when possible, but as long as you end up with a roughly circular shape, it's not really going to matter much. So I would do two or three stitches into those um, two legs of your stitch. All I'm doing here is I'm going um, from the front, poking into the back, and then pulling through. And I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to bring my yarn back to the inside. And you can fasten off your end the same way as before. To embroider the beak onto your basket, you're going to do pretty much the same thing, except now you'll stitch in a triangle instead of a circle. So I'm going to pick a loop that is um, right on that ridge, dividing the two sides, and just pull through. Make your knot. And now you can bring the yarn to the inside. And flip your basket right side out again. So now I'm just going to come across um, to Pretty much just one stitch over. I'm working just on the flat part of my stitch here. Um, and now you can stitch your beak however you want it to actually. If you just want it to be um, a line, that would be really cute. I'm going to instead go back um, into the center of that stitch that I just went through, and I'll stitch down and up a few times to form a triangle shape. And now I'm just going to take my yarn back to the inside and fasten off my end. And of course you'll want to sew your second eye on um, and weave in your ends, and then you'll want to stuff your basket. To stuff your basket, you can just grab your polyfill um, the only parts that you're going to be stuffing are the head and then some of the body so that it will have a base. But really you just want to use a little bit of stuffing just to give the head um, somewhat of a 3D shape. And if you find that, like my basket, um, your seam wasn't quite tight enough so that you can see the stuffing here, you might want to go back, take another um, section of yellow yarn and just seam that closed. This is how full I'm going to stuff it, um, just until it's slightly puffier. And then you can also, if you want to, stuff the base. Now you don't have to, and if you're going to be putting candy in here, you'll probably just want to stick with the head. Um, but should you choose to have that foundation, um, you can just place a little bit of stuffing in the bottom. And there you go, you have finished your basket and it is now available for any spring treats or trinkets that you would choose to place in it. I hope you guys enjoyed this workshop, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!